Hi, I'm Jill Tarter, and today we're going to do some ET support. We'll talk about life beyond Earth. First question comes from at John Maksuta. If you found intelligent life on another planet, would you tell the public the truth or keep it a secret? Absolutely no way we would keep this a secret, John we are going to tell the world. It's just not possible to keep this kind of thing a secret and we don't intend to. At Korak says, extraterrestrial etiquette? How should humanity interact with alien intelligence? I have to say that although we're really proud of ourselves and we think that we are the pinnacle of evolution, the top dog on this planet, if someone else can get from their star to our planet, they are in fact a lot more technologically advanced. I would say the etiquette is we're gonna play by their rules. At Antonio Paris says, why do we assume ET uses radio to communicate? Is SETI a waste of time and millions of dollars? What do you think? Well, me, I think, obviously not. That's what I've spent my career doing, trying to answer this really, really old human question of are we alone in the cosmos? Why do we use radio? Well, we use radio and optical wavelengths. Particularly, radio travels across the very vast distances between the stars in our galaxy without being scattered or absorbed by the dust. So at Lisa Pease, the Fermi Paradox, mathematically, the universe should be teeming with intelligent life. So why don't we see extraterrestrial versions in all directions? Really interesting question. The answer is we've hardly begun to look. Let me give you an example. If that volume of space we need to explore is equal to the volume of all the world's oceans. In 50 plus years, we've observed only about one hot tub's worth of the ocean. Maybe it's not so surprising that we haven't detected anything yet. We need to think in terms of cosmic times and not human lifetimes before we decide we're alone because we haven't found anything. At Ellie Maloney Fick wants to know, should NATO and the US military develop planetary defense systems in case of an extraterrestrial threat? Oh, come on, get real. I think what we should develop a defense system against, asteroids, near earth objects, rocks that have our name on it, and that in fact could be big enough that a collision with earth could be civilization ending. Think about the dinosaurs. They didn't have a space program. If they had, maybe they wouldn't be extinct. At Jody Scott Info, is math a universal language to make contact with another intelligence or is this just anthropocentrism? Probably if you're going to be building any kind of transmitter or receiver, you need math. So in that sense, it's universal. But now we're thinking the way that we express math may be shaped by the very configuration of our own human brains. Math may be universal, the function may be universal, but it may be that we will have a difficult time understanding someone else's expression of that math. Don't know, love to have that problem. At Rachel, 8479974, at what year do you think we will discover aliens, if ever? And Rachel, I can't answer that question. All I can say is that if we don't search, we won't succeed. It's an open question and one that I think perhaps the 21st century will give us an answer to. At Vinyl on Tour, aliens will land on Earth. You have only five songs to explain what music means to mankind. What songs would you choose? Oh, wow. I think the songs of my youth are probably totally alien to, to you. Rather than songs, I might go with Bach because I think that is just the most beautiful music we've ever created. Um, Johnny Be Good, that was on the Voyager Golden Record as well as, as Bach. So music is a personal taste. Um, I'd send Bach and I'd brag. At A. Carboni, we assume aliens look different from us. What if their intelligence is unrecognizable? How do you give them an IQ test? Think about how are we going to interact with them? Are we detecting deliberate messages in optical or radio wavelengths that they've sent us? Are they here looking us in the face? That's going to uh, determine how we interact with them. If they can get here, they're a lot smarter than we are. You can forget the test. We'll just follow their rules.
at skips abs. Even if there is other intelligent life in the universe, is our civilization even worth contacting? Yeah, I suspect we are. Uh, we're doing a lot of things that are maybe not the wisest, but we are us. We are different than they are. I think the most interesting thing in the universe might be how diverse the laws of physics and chemistry can make life. How many different ways can evolution end up producing creatures that are intelligent, technological, even microbial? How many different ways can you make life? That might be the biggest question of the cosmos and one that they'll be interested in finding out what happened here. At Bobby Beaulieu wants to know, did US fighter pilots see a UFO? I don't know. I've seen those videos too. I don't know what they are. I don't know whether the equipment, which was in fact quite new, um, was behaving properly. All I can say is that there's no evidence that indicates that that's spacecraft from another intelligent species. More than likely, we have some problems with our own equipment. It's gonna take more than that to prove that aliens are here. At Will MC Kim, how much do we think all this recent UFO news is prepping the public for a discussion of actual contact? I think that like many things, our interest in this question is cyclical. We get really hyped up about it, somebody makes a claim, people discuss it, and then after a while the Kardashians do something else and we lose interest. What if we are the aliens that we seek and Earth was once populated by a much more intelligent life force until we destroyed it? Well, think about that. The planet is really quite active. About the oldest rocks we can find are a little bit more than four billion years old. And the planet we think formed about four and a half billion years ago. Now, these rocks produce th stones called zircons, and the zircons sometimes have inclusions that have biological ratios of light carbon to heavy carbon. So we're thinking maybe life went back that far, but we don't find any huge trash heaps we don't find any evidence of foundries or large structures or roads. Let's just say we don't see any evidence for that. Intelligence is proportional to the number of thoughts we can simultaneously recall and hold in our minds as we explore new ideas. So what would we look like to an alien species who could juggle 10 or 20 times as many thoughts as our smartest human? We wouldn't look very intelligent, would we? We have to ask questions, not in our language, but in their language. We have to try and interact with non-human intelligence in ways that they perceive. And we're beginning to do a little bit of that with whales and with dolphins and with a number of other species. We can actually understand that prairie dogs standing up in the field are saying to one another, hey, there's the big guy over there in the yellow sweater. He's back. Other intelligence is going to have to speak to us in our language if we're going to have any ability to communicate. At G.D. Bassett, thought experiment. If our AI could lead to an existential threat and there may be other intelligent life in the universe, what about their AI? Yeah, good question. I think it's quite likely that what we will encounter is their artificial intelligence. It can be propagated in so many different ways between the stars. As we build artificial intelligence, and hopefully as they built their artificial intelligence, there are going to be constraints that build into the structure, goals that remain consistent with goals that we have for ourselves. If it's rogue, Game over. What is the organizing principle behind intelligent life? Whoa, what a question. We can't define intelligence. What we have done to make progress in this field is to use technology as our proxy 
for intelligence. So if we detect evidence of someone else's technology out there, we will assume that at some time there was an intelligent entity that created the technology. Best we can do. At Z Shah, if there's a new planet, who'll own the real estate? Will NASA get into the property development business? Great question. We have confirmed over 4,000 other planets around other stars. The question of who owns them, who can mine them, is, you know, a work in progress. The UN Treaty of the Outer Space says that it is possible to benefit from an extra terrestrial body without owning it, that no one owns it. Basing this meta law, if you wish, on the law of the seas. No one owns the ocean, but people can in fact salvage and fish and benefit from the oceans. That's kind of the playing field that we're dealing now with extrasolar bodies. It's a work in progress. We'll see how it plays out. At code is broken. Oh yeah, my code usually is. If aliens exist, who could be far, far older than humanity and have used similar comms tech to us, how come we've not heard a thing? Because the cosmos is pretty damn big. We're talking about signals here for communication. Maybe we need to look for something else. Maybe we're doing an absolutely exquisite job at looking for just the wrong thing. Maybe we haven't figured out that the thing that intelligent advanced societies use to communicate is zeta rays. And we haven't discovered them yet. At K8, Mommy Lisa, what if they are trying to communicate, but we just don't realize it yet? Yes, absolutely. What if they're using some technology, some physics that we haven't yet invented? We could be missing a signal. The only strategy is to stay around long enough so that we get smart enough that we invent the technology and then we can find the signal. At Captain Fish Mugs, do aliens have belly buttons? Yes, well, that's a good question. I'd love to know the answer to that. We look at various forms of life on this planet. Not all of them have belly buttons, so it's possible that aliens don't either. At ET exists. Oh, I like that. When will we hear from ET? And there are lots of hashtags here. I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know if ET is out there. I think it's likely the universe appears to be relatively biofriendly. We know about lots of planets around other stars. We now know about lots of life forms on this planet that exist in extreme, extreme for us environments. There's a chance. And the only way that we'll know is to look. And when? Can't answer that question. Talk to my great granddaughter. She may have an answer for you. That was ET support. That's what I know and mostly what I don't know. But I'm looking forward to learning more with all of you.